What in the world was Jesus doing in the region of Tyre? The Gospel writer doesn't tell us. One might suppose that he was just looking to get away, enjoy some R&R. &R. But would a person look for a vacation spot in the land of their enemies? After all, Israel and the Gentile territory of Syrophoenicia weren't on the best of terms. It's a strange place to find Jesus and his disciples, but there we find them nonetheless. All we know is that Jesus didn't want anyone to know where he was. Was it because he had been going at it too hard and needed some quiet downtime? Or was it because his presence as an outsider in the Gentile city of Tyre meant the potential for conflict? We don't know. We aren't told anything but that he was hanging out incognito with his disciples at the Gentile seaside resort of Tyre. And so from the outset, we can be pretty sure that this will be a story about crossing boundaries. And not just geographical boundaries, but religious and social boundaries. It's a story about a new understanding of what it means to be clean and unclean. And this makes sense because just last week, Jesus was having a conversation with the scribes and Pharisees about how outward behavior doesn't make us clean or unclean, but rather the condition of the heart. And in this morning's text, we see if Jesus practiced what he preached about the inner intentions of the heart. And quite frankly, he fails miserably until a Gentile woman is able to set him straight. He fails because of the way he treats this woman who arrives on the scene and respectfully bows down before Jesus, begging him to cast out a demon from her daughter. He fails because he is unwilling to heal this woman's daughter. He sounds very much like people today when the call goes out to aid for, <clears throat> excuse me, for aid to victims of another country who may be suffering from famine or a natural disaster. He sounds like people who would callously turn away refugees who are running for their lives from another country and seeking asylum in ours. Let the children be fed first, he replies, the children being the children of Israel. We need to take care of our own first, some folks reply when asked for financial assistance. In other words, they have given in to an us versus them mentality. Our own come first and to heck with the rest of the world. But what they fail to understand is the rest of the world is our own. Let the children be fed first, Jesus replies, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Wait a minute. Did Jesus just call this woman and her people dogs? And like the president's press secretary, whose job it is to do damage control, when the president says things that leave others asking, did he really say that? Commentators throughout the centuries have tried to do damage control over Jesus' harsh words. Some have said, the Greek word that's used in Mark's gospel is actually translated little dog. So Jesus was really calling her and her people a puppy. I don't buy it. For one thing, Jesus spoke Aramaic, not Greek, and there's not an Aramaic word for little dog. Some people have said that Jesus said it with a twinkle in his eye inviting her to debate. Again, I don't buy it. There's nothing in the tone of his words to indicate a twinkle in his eye. And we have already been told he was there trying to avoid notice, most certainly not looking to invite a stranger into debate. Some say Jesus, knowing how the conversation would end, was using it as a lesson for his disciples. If that's the case, then it was a cruel lesson 
at a suffering woman's expense. That feeble argument doesn't satisfy me either. No, Jesus was a product of his environment, just like we all are. While growing up, he had been taught that Gentiles were inconsequential and less important than Jews in God's eyes. It's the same lessons that white people are taught about people of color, the same thing that some US citizens believe about immigrants, the same thing that many Christians believe about people of other faiths. It's the same way that people with an income feel about those who are homeless. And it's what many people have been taught by their church about the LGBT community. We've all been taught, either explicitly or in subtle ways, that other people matter less than we do. We have grown up with those lessons, but that's not an excuse to embrace them all our lives. We learn differently when we humanize others. At first, Jesus was unwilling to humanize the woman in this morning's scripture reading, but when he looked into her eyes and heard her story, he was able to acknowledge her humanity. When he saw that here before him was someone who was willing to take whatever insults he might throw her way if it meant that her daughter would be healed, he couldn't help but acknowledge her humanity. This woman was a woman of means. We know this because when she returns to her daughter, the daughter is lying on a bed, not a mat out on the floor as the custom would have been for folks like Jesus. And we know she is a woman of wealth because in her response to Jesus, she referred to pet dogs under the table who eat the children's crumbs. Jewish peasants didn't eat at tables. They ate on the floor. And because they reclined and ate on the floor, they wouldn't have allowed dogs in, dogs in the house where, where they ate. Dogs were kept outside the house, and they survived by scavenging for garbage. And that's what Jesus was likening this woman to. He was calling this wealthy Gentile woman an unclean, garbage-eating dog. This woman humbly accepts her comparison to a dog, but then she makes a case for dogs. She was essentially saying to Jesus that maybe in his country dogs were kept on the outside, but in her country dogs were part of the household. And they ate the same thing that everyone else ate. And so when Jesus called her a dog, she acknowledged that she may not be a child of Israel, but she was a part of the household of humanity. And that entitled her to the same spiritual food that the children of Israel received. And that's when it happened. That's when Jesus had an aha moment. That's when he understood that there is no us and there is no them. That's when Jesus came to realize that no one is unclean. We are all clean in the eyes of God simply by virtue of the fact that we all belong to the same family of humanity. And having been taught a lesson by this Gentile woman, Jesus changed his tune and healed the woman's daughter. Jesus changed his tune. But the sad thing today is there are so many people who aren't willing to do the same. They still see the world as black and white. There are still all those folks on the other side of the wall. And if there isn't a wall, by golly, we'll build one to keep them out. Jesus changed his tune when he came face to face with someone who wasn't like him and realized that he had more in common with her than he ever would have imagined. He changed his tune when he took the time to humanize her instead of labeling her. 
There are different opportunities at this church and in our city to do the same thing. Just recently, there was the Festival of Faith, sponsored by the Greater Waco Interfaith Conference. Festival of Faith is a celebration of the different cultures and religions within our city. It's an opportunity to learn about other religions and discover that we are all members of the same family. There are quarterly events sponsored by the Community Race Relations Coalition. The coalition is a diverse group of people and organizations who seek to promote racial and cultural awareness in our community. Among other things, they offer dinners and documentaries followed by conversations about the evening's topic. There's the annual Crop Hunger Walk in which people from different faith communities raise money and come together to walk in solidarity with those who are going hungry within our own city and around the world. There are lots of opportunities to recognize the humanity in other people, which in turn propels us into a place of compassion and grace, and that becomes the entry points into which into what Jesus called the kingdom of God. But first we need to be willing to take the time to hear the story of other people. And unfortunately, that seems to be the sticking point for many of us. May that change for us. May we come to understand that there is no us and no them. And may we come to realize that we are all members of the same family. And God's grace and love is meant for each of us. No exceptions. Amen. <laughs>